um, snakeskin crocodile case. It's made of cardboard, doesn't protect the guitar at all much, but um, very rare because most of them have fallen apart. So they, uh, but you know, if you're a collector and a completist, you have to have one of these cases. You can see it's not very well made, but it's wow. part of the deal. Beautiful. So anyway, that's uh, that's that. And inside is a uh, a 55 uh, Les Paul Junior in good shape. The reason I bought this, I bought this for my 60th birthday because I was born in 1955. Oh, so, so it works out pretty well. So this was my birthday present to myself. And as you can see, it's a classic. Plectrum out, so Les Paul Jr. In good shape, lovely colour, not too much finished checking or anything, you know, it's but Yeah, you've got a few Yeah, a few of... lines there, but the real deal is nice and clean. Nice and clean on the back. All original. All original, nothing wrong with it. Tuners ha haven't, you know, deteriorated. Cracking guitar. Uh, Leslie West in a box. Just one for. Uh, let's see, I've had it about two and a half years, three years. Right. Um, this is one of the last guitars I bought, actually. Um, I just, I, as I say, I was looking around for a birthday present for myself, and I thought that would be, that'd be a good one. So, wow. And are these um, uh, Bakelite scratch places? Uh, they're, they're, they're celluloid. Mm -hmm. um, Do the, they kind of shrink or anything like that? These ones aren't too bad. The, the, the screws haven't lent. You know. uh, they're, 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 called, they're called speed knobs. Right. That shape. And they're the early 50s knobs. The really early 50s knobs are the same, but they're, they're slightly bigger and they haven't got any numbers. And the stop tail piece? Yep, all original again. Um, very often what you find with these guitars is that uh, with modern light strings, they need the, the bridge pushed further back. So you dial that in with the grub screws underneath here. But very often what you do is you push the bridge so far back, it starts to roll off the, the studs. Mm -hmm. So... There is a way of fixing that. You, I, I use a bit of copper wire and I bang it in and it, it stabilises it. The other thing about these guitars, um, until 1956, the... Uh, I've forgotten the name of the things. The things that sit in the body that hold... Studs or... That hold the studs. The whole yeah. piece of, um, they're, yeah. they're, only about, they're only about that deep. And right. they made them another quarter inch deeper. Mm -hmm. And they hold much better into the body. Because one of the, and, and also they move this pickup about a quarter of an inch away from the bridge. The reason is this little bit of wood here is very weak, and oh, I see in between. Yeah, and quite often it cracks, and it's a that's a devil to fix, mm -hmm. you know, in in an uh, you know in an invisible way. So you see a lot of these guitars go there. Original frets. Yeah, these are original. So they're the skinny frets. So it's a bit of a handful to play. It's not the easiest guitar to play, but it rewards playing because it's just got. You know, play it through an amp with drive, and it's just Leslie West. Wow. Very sweet guitar. That's your junior. Very nice. These are not uncommon guitars, but, I mean, they're, 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 getting, they're getting rarer in good condition, but they're not uncommon. The, the best year probably is 56, because it's got all these attributes, but the pickups moved and the studs are deeper. So this is a 55, but it's in good shape. But the, the 56 would probably be the, the peak single-cut junior. It's, it's really comfortable to play, too. And, you know, simple. Tone, volume... Easy. I had these cases knocked up because they protect ah, the these, 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 right. these cardboard cases because they're so delicate. So I mean, what's this here? That, this, the, the previous owner was not Jeff Beck, it's some other bloke called JB. Joe Bonamassa? <laughs> some old guy who had that tilled in leather, so this is probably American. Wow, and okay. these are kind of like alligator... It is, alligator but it's, it's alligator printed on cardboard. It's, uh, so it's cardboard? Yeah, it's, it's cardboard. They're very weak. Wow. And inside, right, this, is, this is the other must-have junior. Double cut. This one's from 1960, but the great big fat neck, thanks. Great big fat neck. Um, oh, wow. So let's have a look at that neck. Um, so beautiful. And it's got nice... Are these um, mother of pearl, are they? Yeah, all the dots. All the dots are original. I'll tell you a dot story later. So these are bonnet knobs. And is this what you meant by the pickup? Uh, there, there you go. You can see the, the pickup's a little further away. Yeah. So that modification introduced in '56 that went right mm. through until these were, these were discontinued in, from the catalogue in '60, '61. Uh, but a few examples of these were still produced in '63. Yeah. Uh, even into the SG era, era. And this this comes in two colours: cherry red or TV yellow. Um, 
Not they're, Brazilian board. Yeah, they're both exactly the same. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant guitar. And again, you know, t tone and volume, bumblebee capacitor inside. Right. Um, you know, this is shoutier than the other junior. So, but this plays great. Uh, uh, more modern, bigger frets that introduced in '59. So better frets. I didn't know that. I didn't know that they changed the frets. So in '59, all across the board, the frets were changed. So th the yeah. Uh, so '58 guitars have got the skinny frets. Right. And then '59, they introduced the, the wider frets. And for the modern hand, the modern playing, them. Right. So its brother is a. 60 Les Paul Special. Slab board, another cardboard case. This is the worst one of the three, it's got a hole in it. Oh, I see, look. Here we go. So the cardboard's come up, and you can clearly see. And you can see the cardboard. You can clearly see the cardboard. So, I mean, these, these, you know, these are, you know, 30 buck cases back in the day. Uh, and inside, here we have a 1960 uh, Les Paul Special. So, Bob Marley, John Lennon had one. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, John Lennon had the the strange Charlie Christian. Charlie Christian, that's right. So this is a double pickup version of that Junior, if you like. You can see the, the still P90 pickups, same bridge configuration, but obviously switchable. The, these guitars, when they were first introduced, this switch was up here. Right. Right. Then it moved there, and then what they found was loads of people were breaking these guitars. They were leaning them on their amps, they fell over, and they would either break here, which is common, or they break here. It's a very weak neck join yeah. because the neck tenon that goes underneath through here, yeah. right, is quite thin and flat because there's a pickup on top. So there's no wood underneath. So what they did is they they made they made the guitar as I say first with the pickup switch there, then here, then the third configuration they moved that pickup away to give more wood meat. Right, and I also noticed a little bit of plastic. And it's a little wood. bit of plastic stuck in with two brass pins. Yeah, and, and the, a, a lot of the Gibson guitars at this time, some, some of them had writing on them as well there. Um, mm -hmm. But they're, they're all, it, it, it's almost, you know, almost an afterthought, sort of just like, like a thin bit of plastic just pinned on. It's, it's, it's weird. Mm, but it's a nice attention to detail. It is, it? it is. Nice attention to detail. The, this plastic thing is called a poker chip on for the Les Paul collectors, and obviously this is a black poker chip rather than a... Right, uh, it's just for a place to set. Uh, that, this, this is actually an original knob. Right. But it, in any other, in any dealership, this would have been plundered because these things, if they're original and real, yeah. and you're looking for them to replace them on a Sunburst Les Paul, you can spend $400 on one of these. Crazy. So everybody, what, what people do is they, they nick all the parts mm -hmm. from cheaper guitars and put them on the expensive collectibles to make a profit. The, I, I finished off on the Junior talking about the neck. This guitar is actually a slightly earlier 1960 serial number than that Junior, but the neck is much later. This This is a... Classic 60s thin wide flat neck. I see. The, this guitar is is the, the the special is my least favourite Les Paul configuration. I, I don't I don't think the P90 and the binding thing works that well. This mm -hmm. can, it's easy to play. Is it's it a straight, wider neck? <sighs> looks kind of wider. It feels wider because it's so much thinner. Right. It's it's really quite wide and flat. But the um, so this is, you know, these are nice guitars. This is probably my least favourite. But the funny thing is, when I play the, take this out and gig it, it sounds absolutely beautiful. Now this is, it's just light and comfortable. And one interesting thing about these specials is the absence of a silk screen on the headstock. And I don't know what was in Gibson's mind, but they took the silk screen logo off the, the Les Paul Special before they took it off the Junior and the Standard. So these guitars from 59 and 60, you would think this should have a Les Paul TV special mm -hmm. because it's a TV or Les Paul special model I think is what they said should have that it doesn't and you think okay well that must be a refinished headstock no nope, no nope, it's supposed to be missing but as I say this is probably my least favorite Les Paul oh my goodness it, you know when you when you play it live with a bit of volume it it's it sounds Wonderful, and it's 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 a lovely, it's nice and small and light, and it's just an easy guitar to play. So, you know, mm. there you go. So that's the slab bodies. Um, right, okay. For the geeks, this is not an Epiphone case; it's a Supro case, apparently. Okay. So I'm told. Right. 
So what is um, this? Uh, on... It's grey. So it's kind of right because it's grey, but it's wrong because it's got white walls. Mm-hmm. But it does go very well with the contents, okay? Okay. Because so what's this is... in here? I've no idea. What's what's in here? Right. So this is. Start. At with... Oh, hello. Right. This this is a very interesting guitar. This is an Epiphone. Mm-hmm. So a casino. The model number is two thirty T. Single pickup in the middle. And we'll have a chat about that in a minute. Different tailpiece to its Gibson counterpart. Gibson knobs, Gibson pickup. Gibson manufacturer. Oh, so these are like this. Is it, is, was that 60? So this is 60, late 61, early 62. The most interesting thing about the guitar is the metal bikini logo. Because the casino, by the time it was launched in its catalogue, it had the Mother of Pearl logo. So this is a very, very early Epiphone casino. Now, Epiphone was, had been bought by Gibson in about 59. And so its guitars were made on the Gibson bench and were very often replicas, or, well, they were Gibson guitars. So this is a Gibson ES330T, but with Epiphone appointments. Dot neck, wide and flat, beautiful player, great sofa noodling guitar, because of course these guitars are acoustic. So they're... Lively than a solid body. I like the, the, the kind of the big E. Yeah, you know. it's a pity the little bit of silver's worn off, but that's where. And so, some nice flame, isn't there? Some nice little. I don't know if, you, is this, if the camera's going to pick it up, but yeah, it's a nice flame on there. So this this is one of an, th- this this is my favourite kind of guitar. Single pickup, three three zero, in this case two three zero. Um. And I got this from a shop in Philadelphia that sold mainly pointy guitars that had obviously taken it in in part exchange for a uh, for, for some you know pointy shredder thing. Probably a guy buying something for his grandson. His grandson probably did well out of it, and so did I. And it's in fantastic condition. Beautiful back. So, oh, one question: Is that yeah. a one-piece back or two-piece back? Ah, it's no, there's a joint. So it's a two-piece back. A two piece. But as you can see, that the shape of the headstock is different to a Gibson. So. It's made on the same bench, but different enough. A nice guitar. Um, I'll talk about it now because it applies to the next two guitars I show mm. you. The, if you get these with two pickups, four knobs and a switch, they tend to be pricier. For my money, these are much better guitars. Right? First of all, there's the whole issue about the pickup loading that you get with single pickup guitars, this is this has more bite and more attack. But secondly, this pickup's in just the right place. On a 330, this pickup is very dark. This pickup is very shrill. This is like a clarinet. So if you want to play your blues distorted drive type stuff, this is where the pickup has to go. People don't like it because it gets in the way of their plectrum or their fingers. So my view that the, these guitars with the pickup in the middle are the ones to go for. They sound fantastic. I've got some very good friends who've got the two pickup ones, and they're brilliant guitar players, and they're very happy. But for me, I go for these. Uh, as you'll see, because I'm going to show you where I go next. This is actually, of the ones of these I have, this is my least favourite. And I really love this guitar, but it's rare because of that configuration. It's rare. It's a great guitar. And the case is pretty. It's almost an Epiphone case. So this is my favourite guitar of all. If all the guitars you're going to see, this is my favourite. And is this an, an original case? This is an original case. Now, this is this is kind of what cardboard cases became. What does it say there? It says the Sabres. The Sabres. So that would have been a bad... The bloke would have been in the Sabres in the so, early in, 60s. In America somewhere, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So this guitar, well, this case, the cardboard case, but it's moved on a bit. It's got a bit swanky, but it still doesn't offer much protection to the... So still a cardboard case? Still a cardboard case. Uh, the handle went a long time ago, so one of these retrofit handles... Right. Which is legit. And this is a 1962 Gibson ES330TC. What a beautiful colour. Okay, C is for the cherry. And T, without a D after it, D is for double pickups. If it just has a T, it's a single pickup. So everything I just said about the Epiphone applies to this. Gibson tailpiece. Gibson headstock. Uh, slightly thicker neck. We're getting to 62, so the necks are getting thicker again. let me see if I can get a shot of that neck. But, 
So it's got yeah, it has. It's slightly thicker. Slightly thicker. Not not really thick, but a little bit thicker. Uh, uh, I had an, another three three zero from sixty five that I never got on with. I sold it. I, I phoned a, a friend of mine who was a dealer and said, "Have you got a nice any old three three zeros?" Dot neck three three zeros, and he said, "Funnily enough, I do." And he brought this round. It was no money. No money. It was a thousand pounds. That's a deal of a century. I mean, you know, this is quite a long time ago. Right. But and and uh, there's something you can see that someone's used one of those um, tuna winders. Oh yeah. And they damage the uh, damage the the finish. But guys, I don't know if you can see this at home. This guitar is just mint. It's just. Um, um, oh look, you can see another one of my Grolsch um, right. things. And it's um, even got a little bit of flamey or something on that neck, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is going to pick up, but it's a beautiful piece of mahogany, that. But this this is my favourite guitar. Right. It, the, the only trouble is these are semi-acoustic guitars, and they, they do, you know, they're great for noodling in front of the telly. But they are, um, they, they can feed back. They can feed back. So they're difficult to gig with, but it plays Because there's like, no, ho ho they're hollow, aren't they? There's no, right. there's no, no block inside. But they are. Um, this uh, this is the guitar that, that when I play, it really it plays me. It's a fantastic guitar. Beautiful. So while we're in that vein, moving on. Uh, it's nice to see these guitars with the original cases. Yes, although you never quite know whether these are the original cases or cases that they've been. Um, Re, uh, reacquainted with because the market is such that you know you can get so much more money if you've got the whole outfit you know guitar and case yeah. right while we're here okay now this is this is more like a proper case this is a Gibson right. Brown case but this is a hard case so this so this is when they first started introducing them or would they have no had... these have been going through the through the 40s and certainly the 50s right but you, you pay extra see, seen some wear you know but and this was an extra year probably about 75 bucks up charge for this Right. Um, but were these made in Canada? These boxes? I don't know. They, there was a company called Stone, a company called Lifton, and there was another company. I think with a German name. I think the Lifton ones were Canadians. I think. Were they? I think so. I'm not sure. But... And the Lifton ones are the most famous. And sometimes they have a badge on them uh, somewhere. This one doesn't. Okay. Right. So, at the risk of being repetitive, this is another semi-acoustic. 330. So this is number three. Number three. Right, 330 TN. So T, one pickup. N, natural. This is from 61. Uh, and you can see I really like these single pickup 330s. I really, really like them. This is beautiful. You know your that the guitar with the two P90s, the special? Yeah. What year was that? That was 60. Because I'm thinking this neck looks the same as that. Yeah. So it could possibly be the same neck. This is this is similar because that was a sixty. This is sixty one. Right. So similar era. They were wider and flatter. Beautiful frets. Really, really quick player. This. And uh, you can see there's some finished checking, but it's not exactly a disaster. It's in pretty good shape. So this is the checking here. Yeah. Nice um, tunematics. Yeah. And the kind of classic fifty nine. And yeah. And the slightly earlier lobs, no reflectors in the top. Uh, so no, I, I, I've, I've got my dates wrong. This is sixty, so this is this is almost contemporary with that special, because these are sixty knobs. They 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 got reflectors in late sixty. So uh, the other thing is you get obviously the contrast between the uh, the maple of the body and the mahogany of the neck. Same clues and tuners. Marvellous piece. But, you know, and, and again, you know, a, a great, great sofa guitar. So that's, uh, that's the three three O's. Um, and then one to add while we're on the semis. Uh, just to complete that picture, put it away. Oh. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's take the left turn for a minute because this is important because this is the guitar that came before the three three O. Okay. This is the 225. 225, right. Right, and look at, look again, e ES225. Is this the guitar that George Thorogood played? Uh, yes, that's right. T, no D, because it's one pickup. M, because it's natural. 
This is in remarkable condition. For a 1957 guitar, this is unbelievable. 1957, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. There's hardly... There's hardly even a scratch. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. This came from the mountains about 200 miles inland from Sydney in Australia. And the guy had clearly had this for most of his life and he finally decided to sell it and I was very, very lucky to get this. And this, this looks like a really nice bit of engineering, <laughs> doesn't it? People hate them. But it's, it's, you, you can see the engineering the quality oh, it's, of, it's, the, of the machinery is great. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful workmanship. But the, you see this tailpiece on only two guitars. You see it on the early Les Pauls from 52 and from this. But the early Les Pauls from 52, the strings curve around underneath it. Right. Because they set the neck angle too shallow. And people hate the guitar because if you think you're playing it, you can't palm mute it because the strings are all the way down there. Right. Right. On this guitar, they got it right. They got it coming over the top. Do you adjust the intonation of this guitar with these two screws here, pulling it back, and you adjust the height with these two screws underneath, so it's quite flexible. But people don't like these, these bridges very much. They, they get fussy about them. Uh, you can see also that the pit guard is kind of um, dished. It's kind of collapsing, isn't it? Yeah, well, what, what happens is that the, the, the different layers, they, they lose some of the volatile, their volatile compounds to, to evaporation over many years, and they, they evaporate at different speeds, the black and white evaporate different speeds and so the black has contracted more than the white and it's caused the pickup the pit guard to dish yeah you can see that yeah so i mean that's an occupational hazard with these it's, things it's a beautiful sort of cutaway it is now so this is exactly yeah. the same shape as an es175 but it's thinner it's thinner yeah so in, in one way it's kind of like the ultimate sort of kind of semi sort of three three five meets yeah 175 yeah fantastic um against it it's an earlier guitar it's got skinny frets uh, and it's got it's got a wonderful kind of slightly oh, out of tune, but it's got a very a softer tone, well out of tune, but slightly softer tone. Also, the pickup is on a, a riser, like a grommet there. Oh, I see. Yeah, but beautiful pickups, aren't they? These. <sighs> this is. They all have you know like like humbuckers. They're all different. This one's extraordinary. It almost sounds like. It's in the middle position of two pickups. It's mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I don't mean in terms of where it is. You know that the tone you get when you've got both pickups switched on. Yeah. And it has a little bit of that sound about it. Wow. It's an interesting sounding guitar. Oh, and it's it's got quite a fat neck, hasn't it? Yeah, quite a fat neck. So look, I don't know if you can see this, guys. So more more typical of your you know mid fifties when the necks were fat. They're slimmed down in sixty. Yes, yeah, so it's a nice chunky neck. Yeah. So what year is this again? This is 57. 57. That's just astonishing condition. Now, the, actually, while we're here, talking of case names, this one's got a name. It's got a name, has it? Yeah, I don't know what... That's a, that, this is a stone case. Stone case company. It's a stone case. Yeah. It's pretty sturdy, isn't it? Made of some kind of a plywood or something? Yeah, it's plywood, yeah. You, you see a lot of these cases, when they're damaged, the, the first place they get damaged tends to be down here. Here you go, there's a bit going there. It'll get worn around here and you can see the edge of the plywood. Oh yeah, you can see it, yeah. Yeah. And very often they get really chewed and quite frayed around there. Um, so that's the 225. Okay, so Bob, what we've got here? Right, okay, so we'll just finish off the semi-acoustics. This, this is really something. The first thing is this outside case, the outer case. You remember these guitars came from Chicago? Yeah. Chicago is a rainy place. And musicians would very often be going around doing gigs and they'd be standing in the rain with their guitars getting wet. So Gibson subcontracted some company, I don't know who, to produce basically a raincoat for their guitar cases. Amazing. So this is an overcase. So it's, it's made out of a kind of very heavy raincoaty canvas material. Okay? And so when you want to, it's also got a really nice big pocket. Like a moccasin. In here for your music, you know. And is it a moccasin? <laughs> Um, you know, the English, <laughs> the English raincoat. <laughs> you know that material. Macintosh. Macintosh. That's it. Yeah. So thank you. That's the outer case. Okay. Which zips all the way around and has a clippy thing going through the handle. That's the outer case. Okay. And then that gives way. It's very tight. That gives way to the inner case. Right. 
This is an original in the case. Uh, you very seldom see them in this condition. Uh, now, by the way, that outer case did not come with this guitar. That came later. And the collectors and dealers I know say that they are some of the rarest things of all. There's a name here. Artistic brand. So the case came later. I understand it used to live on a Gibson ES 345. Right. And a very, very good friend, a collector friend, very, very kindly gave this to me, this case. Yeah. Um, well, this case is what... Well sorry, the, no, the outer case. The outer the, case. Uh, I'm sorry to make such a fuss about a piece of, you know, rather mangled old canvas, but they are... If you're a collector... No, the viewers of this channel, Bob... They this are is, the deal. This is what they want to see, this kind of stuff, you know. So uh, uh, this, this makes this a whole set. The next thing you've got is you've got this fantastic clean 1959 case. Ah, I gave the game away. It's a 59. OK, and inside we have a, another semi-acoustic, five-latch case, and we've got an ES-335 in Sunburst, 59, almost brand new. That is, um, it's, that is a beast. It's a showstopper. It's yeah. great, you know, two paths. Um, I have to say, since I'm talking to camera and I, you know, talking as if I know everything, I've forgotten what colour the bobbins are underneath these. Oh, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, I could have a look. Um, next time I restring it, I should have a look because I've forgotten. I think that there is a white bobbin in there somewhere, I've forgotten. Uh, Dimazio, Demar um, <laughs> Because we might get done for copyright from Demacio if we don't mention them. <laughs> Quite well. Now the only thing, the only thing that's not original about this guitar is the uh, the tuning pegs. These are Uncle Lou's Lou Guitarnus replacements because the originals that happened. Well, look at this. They door. just so what what happens is that you get a reaction between the plastic in the in in the. Um, in the tuner button, and the uh, something that comes off the die, the pink die, in the case, and you, so you, 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 and often remember, you know, plastics made in the late fifties were quite unstable. So that's why you get pit guards shrinking, you get tuning pegs dissolving, and stuff like that. And it's it's horror for a collector because your tuning pegs are dissolving, and you go, oh, my guitar's just eating itself alive. But there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, th this is a classic guitar. I mean, it's it's got the mm -hmm. you know, large-ish, you know, D-shaped '59 neck, like you'd expect to see on a Les Paul. And th this and the Les Paul from the period are probably about the most iconic guitars. And and this is for viewers. I don't know if you can see this. This is actually dishing a little bit as yeah. well, although it's pretty in better condition than yeah. the other. You know, but and also. For those of you at home, I can't tell you how the condition of this is superb. Yeah, it is. It's it really is. Um, Again, there's there's hardly a scratch on it. And the label, the label in there. Now, the only thing that really troubles me about this guitar is that inside here, there should be stamped onto the wood uh, a factory order number or FON. And there is a factory order number in here. You can see it. If you put very, very faint red light in here, you can see it. But it's almost invisible. It's faded. They do sometimes fade. But it means that, you know, it's quite easy to print a sticker like this. It's got no mm. serial number on the back of the headstock. Didn't they have any serial numbers? Not at that time. No, the, 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 the solid body guitars did, but the, um, the, the semis and the, the, the jazz guitars didn't. So you're relying on that and you're relying on the factory order number and obviously on the, the codes on the potentiometers which are right. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy that this is the guitar is as it should be. But the absence, the, the, the invisible fon is a, it's an irritation. Nice guitar. 50s Gibson uh, brown case, four latches which means so that in one, the two, two, three, four. Three, four. So let's talk about this case a little bit. Tell me about the case, Bob. Uh, well, one thing about the, the, the earlier cases are slightly squarer at the top. 
this isn't particularly, it's a bit flat there. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this is a stone or a lift, but it's one of those. It hasn't got a name. The, the, the badge, which is normally here, mm. has gone. Uh, and this is wood. This is wood, isn't it? Yeah, wood. plywood. Yeah, same pink interior. Mm -hmm. They call these cases California Girls, which is a bit obscene. And this contains a 1954 uh, gold top. Les Paul, standard. Again, in ridiculously good condition. In good shape. Although, um, I, if we get it out to the light, the, this gold finish, um, it was notoriously... It, if, if you get any cracking in, in the surface, mm -hmm. and the player's sweat gets in, the, this, this finish is made up of brass filings suspended in clear paint. And if moisture gets in, the brass filings go green, which is why you often see a green greening on gold tops. Mm -hmm. Um, it's particularly pronounced on gold tops where they're all gold, and particularly the neck where the player's sweat mm -hmm. gets. You get cracks in the neck, the player's sweat gets in, the finish all kind of puckers up, and I, I really don't like the old gold Les Pauls for that reason. They look, they look fantastic, but they, they're mm -hmm. not good to play. This, on the other hand, is you know, really shiny and clean, but you can see that the, the moisture's got in. You can see it's darker. Mm -hmm. So, you can, and you can see this kind of greeny sort of, yeah. especially around here, it's a bit of green. Quite subtle. So wraparound bridge, which happened between late 53 and early 55, before they introduced the Tunematic. Two P90 pickups, two volume tone, pickup switch. Um, for the geeks, the pickup switches on these guitars, 54 through 57, have a slightly flatter top. They're made out of the same material, which is called something like Kerilin. Um, and again, collectible guitars being what they are, they change hands for ridiculous amounts of money because when you hit the switch like that, they tend to crack. Um, and these are originals, yeah? These are originals. And it's true, you know, because you see these being reissued. Yeah. And they're always this sort of colour, and you think, why are they this colour? And that's the reason why. The, the reissues are getting better and better. Um, and some people are even reissuing them and making them out of the same weird old mm -hmm. plastic. Um, this guitar has been refretted because when I got it, the, the old original skinny frets had no meat left on them at all. Oh, and, and you've, the tangs have gone, haven't they? Yeah, so, so this guitar has been refretted with slightly, slightly higher frets, so it just makes it a bit easier to play, mm -hmm. holds a note better. Uh, uh, and it's a it, classic 50s neck, you know, quite, quite chunky. Quite round. Whenever I see reissues of these pickups, they always seem to yellow them, whereas these are quite white. Mm. I've noticed that um, on a lot of vintage guitars, they, they don't go yeah, yellow, do they? Yeah, they don't. But on some guitars, well, we might get a guitar out later, where the, 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 the you know, the, the plastics technology was pretty, pretty infant in its infancy in those days, and a lot of the plastic is quite unstable. So you mm. know, it, it, it gets very brittle, or you know, it it, it, it changes colour. And if they didn't come from the same run, the same vat of plastic, then they might change colour differently. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, it's funny, but the, these these knobs as well always sort of seem to be more modern than the ones that came after. I don't know why. I love these knobs. They're much easier to grab hold of. Yeah. The, the bonnet knobs are a bit fiddly. They are. I don't they, know why they, they, they changed them. These are great. Um, I, I really love this configuration of Les Paul with this wraparound. People say, oh, don't you have problems with the intonation? Not me. No, not at all. I mean, it takes a little bit of setting up, but, you know. And, by the way, what I was saying about the junior, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the sockets into which the, these, these screw posts sink, they were still quite shallow in these days. So sometimes these guitars can get a bit wobbly down there, so there's a lot of string tension pulling against here, so a lot of physics going on. But apart from that, all original. All how, real. how chunky is the neck? Quite chunky. Quite, it's, a, it's a proper Gibson C shape. Yeah, that is it. Okay, uh, the last Gibson in the pack, if anybody out there is still awake. Uh, another brown case, good shape. What's the story on this case, Bob? Uh, same story, uh, this is 1958, still got the Gibson logo. Oh, four latch case, which is right for 1958. Um, 
they tended to get to five latches in 59, and 59 is where the real serious high priest collector voodoo starts. But this is pretty great too. This is a 1958 case containing a 1958 guitar. Oh, that's lovely. Which is a 1958 Les Paul Sunburst. Uh, all original. Uh, original frets, original hardware, original pickups, original electronics, original tuning pegs, no damage to the tuning pegs. Uh, you can see the silk screen is, as is often the case, quite faded, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, the only source of complaint on this guitar for the real purist is that the previous owner has chamfered the bottom edge of the pickguard very slightly, so it's sharp here, but it's smooth here. Strange, and some, some collector geek would have a go at that. And do you remember when I was talking about the uh, some of the previous guitars, I was talking about switch tips? Yeah. This is a, a replica. Right. Okay, the guitar came with its original switch tip. Oh, will you let me in? Ah, right. Came with its original switch tip. Uh, yeah, which broke. So, I don't think you see that, guys. Yep. That's the original one. And so, a friend of mine who was out at the Arlington Guitar Show found, oh. found me Yeah. one that hadn't broken. Oh. There. £400. £400 so you for spent, a piece of plastic. So you spent £400. Dollars. Dollars on, on this thing here. Uh, 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 actually, on this one I'm holding here. Oh, this one. And this is a £12 replica, which right. I keep on the guitar, just because I do that too. I... Yeah. So, but I mean, you, you may well think, you know, what a complete idiot. A, a man who can spend £400 on a piece of plastic like that must be a certifiable idiot. That is the world of guitar collecting. Well, I mean, how long have you had this for, Bob? 97 or 98. What's that there? That, oh, that, that's just, that's just a, a set of old Gibson strings. So there you go, guys, that's what... Your strings used to come looking. That's like. what they used to look like. I mean, it's, it's not, they're not the strings that came with the guitar or anything, but it's just what they. What, Around 58? Uh, these, this is a bit later. Um, if you want to see string packets, I think we've got some here. Um, they're in the lid of this. Oh, no, here we go. Uh, so there you go. These are the original strings. I think this is probably 50s, 50s? mid late 50s, 60s, definitely 60s. Look at them going down memory lane. Right, let's let's talk about this guitar then. So, so what... th this is um, well, th this is this was the guitar of my dreams when I was growing up. Everybody who mattered to me as a guitarist played one. Clapton, obviously, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and Led Zeppelin. I think Mick Taylor had a uh, fifty-eight. Mick Taylor, Paul Kossoff, Keith Richard. Uh, one of my favourites, Gary Green from Gentle Giant, Duane Allman. Um, list endless. Pretty much everybody I worship played one of these, so it was my childhood dream. And eventually, dreams came true. What to say about this? It's um, th these th these guitars changed all the time. Um, there's no such thing as a typical 58, 59, or 60 Les Paul. The 58s tend to have bigger, rounder necks. This does. The 58s had the skinny frets. This does. By 59, the neck is flattening a little, becoming more D-shaped, and the frets have got bigger, which is why people love them. 59s tend to have more flame in the wood, which means collectors go crazy for them. Um, the pickups, some people say, got a little hotter by 59. These are quite... They're very nice pickups. They're beautifully balanced. They're beautifully, you know, revealing. I, can I just say, Bob, we, we did a video, didn't we, of planes? We did. We did. And... and but the thing, the thing that's so interesting about these guitars is they don't come alive until you put them through an amp that's in pain. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not just the guitar and it's not just the amp, it's the combination. So, you know, the classic was this, probably through the treble pickup, through a dimed Marshall. That's the vintage sound. And nobody's beaten it yet. People spend more and more money to improve, well, capture it and they can't. But it's in pretty good shape. I've seen a lot of these that have been really beat. And tell me about the serial number. Is it the, is it, isn't there a famous person's guitar that's close to this? There is. 
but I can't tell you who. Can eight, I? I can, I can tell you the number. It's seven zero numbers away. It's eight five five two three. Can you give us a clue about the owner? Uh, not really, because I wasn't ever supposed to see it or touch it. But uh, can you play a little riff that he did? No, no. But what <laughs> I can sing a line. What sing I can a... do is I can say that he has a particular thing. He likes really big frets, and he puts big frets on all his guitars, all his vintage guitars. Right. So. He'll still sell those vintage guitars for a lot of money because they belong mm. to him. So it's kind of like money for nothing, right? Mm. <laughs> boom, boom. But, <laughs> but if he was an ordinary, you know, not a rock star collector right. like me, he would have forfeited you know, tens of thousands of dollars by changing mm. the frets to those horrible big things. Right. They're, they're almost as big as the frets on a Jackson. Right. They're really... Mind you, one thing to say for it is that if you put those frets on a guitar like this, it sustains for a fortnight. It, Gary no, Moore did that as well, didn't he? Um, what did Gary Moore do? I played his gold top, his 57, with the black parts. He had really enormous strings. He had like 12s on it. It was really hard to play. Oh. So this, this is pretty much mint, original. Not, not mint. It's, it's seen some wear. Uh, but it's in good shape. And it's original. Nylon nut. And did the logo change at all from the 58 to 59 or was um, it more or less the same? Uh, it does change a bit. Uh, sometimes the little dot joins onto the uh, G and on guitars from the earlier 50s the, the, the Gibson logo is further down. Right. There's, there's a whole collector geek world about this. Right. There's also some issues about where the, um, how high up the, uh, the truss rod cover is and there are a few fakes in existence. I've, I've seen a fake 59335 where the truss rod cover was just way too high up. How heavy is that? Uh, it's about eight pounds and six ounces. Perfect weight. It's a middle, middle weight. Can I? Yeah, that's it's, nice. It's light for a Les Paul, but I mean, Les Pauls are still heavy guitars. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not featherweight. That's beautiful. And I mean, it's kind of cool to see if you look at the back. It's cool to see the kind of wear here. Yep. So it has been played, it has been gigged. Yeah. It's had a life. Yeah, nice little bit of wear in there. It's had a life. It, it spent a lot of its time in America. I understand that it belonged to one of the guitarists in a, a big hair rock band called Cinderella. And oh. that he, he, uh, he had one or two of these apparently. And it found its way over here to a guy in Essex and then he sold it through a dealer to me. Right. That apparently is the story. I can't validate any of that, but... I've, I've emailed the guy in Cinderella, but he doesn't respond, so... Well, maybe he'll watch this video. Maybe he will. In which case, hello! It's a great guitar. <laughs> there you are. Okay, so that's a 1958 Les Paul, the real deal. The real deal. All there. Real case. Uh, yeah. You know. And as always, I mean, everyone watching this video will know this already, but you have to put a padding there, because otherwise, if you don't, that touches the bottom. Which is fine until somebody hits the, there and you snap the headstock. I didn't know that. That's why people pad. I mean, apart from the fact it just pads it better. It mm. also just takes the guitar off the bottom. It's very protects good, it. Yeah. That's why they do it. Pride and joy. With the original case. With the original case. The whole Monty. If I could find an original <laughs> exterior cover for this, that would be fantastic. It's not one of those guitars that's changing hands for $400,000 in the States. It's not a super, super clean, super flamey, 59 but the tragedy of those is that they're going they're going into the hands of people who are collecting them in large numbers because they're fabulously wealthy and they're not playing them yeah and guitars need to be played you know guitars need to be played to remain good otherwise they dry out and they just become they lose character yeah so i i, I think that whole collecting thing that whole mass collecting thing there's one guy who's got over a hundred of these things and what a waste. It, well, it's, it's fantastic, but it's denying the world a lot of pleasure. And also, those guitars are, sorry, mate, mm. they're deteriorating. And, and uh, you can, guys, um, you can check out the video Bob and I did actually playing that 58. You know, wanted to, to think that my replica Les Paul sounds as good, but unfortunately um, for me, the 58s and 59s and 60s do have a sound that I've never heard from a replica or a reissue. That, that, that's, that's my experience. It's the only guitar, when I do go out and play it, people who don't know anything about the guitar, they just like music, they say, 
what's what's that? That sounds fantastic. And that's not because of my crummy playing. That's because of the sound of the guitar. Bob's it's, a great player. He's a humble guy. But it's you know it's the sound of the guitar. It gets people who don't know about guitars and don't think about guitars just thinking that sounds great. It, they have something. 